Hello my fellow human beings, I hope all of you are doing well. This video today is mainly about how to dress Victorian for a Victorian ball. This is for my 18th birthday, which I'm having as a Victorian ball, and I've mainly made for educational purposes so I can help all of my guests understand how to dress and what they're supposed to wear and whatnot, but it's also just a good educational video on how to dress Victorian for a ball for men and women. So, my mother actually volunteered all of her knowledge with an interview style video with me asking questions and her spewing out her wonderful knowledge of everything. So, now with that out of the way, let's get right on into the interview with all of the information. So, when we say the Victorian time period, like, what is the look that we're talking about? Well, the Victorian time period spanned just about, well, over 60 years in the 1800s, and it's the time period that Victoria was Queen of England, so that's why we call it the Victorian time period. So if you can imagine how much um, the silhouettes and the style changed in those 60 years, um, there's a lot of different styles from very slim fitting up to very poofy. But the most kind of common one that people think of when they think Victorian is the kind of the, a lot of people think of it also as like the Civil War um, time period. That's the 1860s. Um, but it's the, the fitted top, usually short sleeves. And we're talking specifically for like a ball gown. Um, would have short sleeves, a natural waist, so it's not high-waisted, it's not dropped low, and the big bell skirts. Um, so that's kind of the, the normal when we say Victorian dress, that's kind of what comes up to most people's minds. Um, just because out of those 60 years that she reigned, that was like 40 of them. So she reigned from 1837 to 1901. And from 1837 up until just about 1870, it was um, that kind of basic silhouette. So um, when we say, like if you're looking for to make a Victorian outfit. That's usually what people are thinking. However, there are other silhouettes. You can do your research. What we say is basically choose what you like and you think that you'll get the most use out of um, because it does range from 1837 up to 1901 and the, the looks and styles change quite a bit during that time. Now that we kind of have an idea of what we're looking for, how do we find something like for the ball or for something like that we could use for cheap and whatnot? Yeah. Uh, so you have quite a few options. The first, of course, is to make your own. Um, but obviously, if you don't know how to sew, you don't have the time or the energy for that, then that's not feasible for you. Um, you can borrow from somebody if they have stuff, of course, um, if they're willing to lend it out. And uh, you can buy something online. You can literally go into Amazon. And um, I believe Sarah will probably put links in the description of some things that we found on Amazon that have the right kind of basic look and structure and actually seem like fairly decent dresses for under $100. So really, it's not that bad. Um, you can also find things at like Halloween stores and thrift stores. Um, we found quite a few dresses at like yard sales and thrift stores that, um, actually fit fairly well and, um, they, they're not exactly right, but we'll go into how to alter things in a little bit. Um, but you know, probably for around like 50 ish bucks, you can find a decent Victorian esque outfit at a thrift store. And that would be like, um, you could probably find a dress for 15, 20 bucks. Um, uh, you'd want a hoop skirt to go under that. And those you can find new for 25 bucks. Um, and then, you know, some gloves and some other accessories that we'll talk about. So for, you know, around 50 bucks, you can get yourself an outfit. So what can we do if we find something that is like really close, but it's just not quite there? Um, well, 
So if you find a dress, maybe it's somebody's that you're borrowing or you found something that almost works at a thrift store, there's several things you can do. Um, first, if it's too big on you, that's a really easy fix. You just take in the side some. Um, and we've, in our past, we have actually used safety pins. So you don't even need to sew it. You don't even know how, need to know how to sew. You just literally turn it inside out and have somebody grab the sides and safety pin it down the sides and put like, you know, like six to eight safety pins down to make it fitted through the bust and um, the waist. And I mean, honestly, that's all you need a lot of times. Um, so if it's too big, that's awesome. That's actually the easiest thing to work with. Um, if it's, if you're dealing with this, a hoop skirt or a skirt that's too long, um, it's pretty easy. Again, you could tuck up and tape. We've actually used masking tape to tuck, tuck it up. If you don't want to actually like cut it and sew it, um, you literally fold it up and use masking tape on the inside to hold it. Um, that will, that works for an evening. That's fine. Um, the other thing you can do is swag it up. So you actually just kind of bunch up, um, every couple of feet around the skirt, you just kind of bunch it up and then, you know, safety pin it up or, or whatever and stick a bow there. So it looks cute. Um, so you actually make swags. Um, if it's too short and, uh, we found one at a thrift store that actually is a, a high low skirt. Um, so obviously the front of it is way too short because it's like just knee length. So what you can do is you can make an underskirt, which is just a simple gathered skirt that matches in some way um, the, un the, the main dress. And it just goes underneath and it makes it the whole outfit longer. Um, so that's an easy fix. And it, they can be literally a tube that you gather at the waist um, as an underskirt. It works really well. Um, and then to make that um, that overskirt look a little bit better. Again, you kind of swag it up and gather it up and, you know, put flowers or bows or something on it. Um, if it's too plain, the Victorians loved lace and flowers and bows and trimmings and all of that. So if you found a dress, maybe you found a white dress, maybe it's a wedding dress and you're like, well, I don't want to wear a wedding dress because you know, it's a wedding dress. Um, but if you add colored flowers and lace and trim and bows and whatnot to it, all of a sudden it no longer looks as much like a wedding dress. It just looks like a, a white dress with lots of colors on it. Um, I've seen some that are really pretty and some of them that are kind of old fashioned wedding dresses that we don't really see. It's, we don't think of it as a wedding dress anymore. It's not the first thing that comes to mind. Um, we've had, uh, kids and uh, young ladies wear those two balls before and they work perfect. All right, so here at Goodwill, um, they don't have very many formals, um, but we did find some wedding dresses. So if white is your thing, then um, we're gonna go through a couple of examples of what to look for and what not to look for. So first we're gonna look at what not to look for. So this is a bad example all around. One. It has spaghetti straps for the sleeves. That is not Victorian. And then it does have a nice wide skirt, but it's chiffon netting that is not Victorian at all. So this is definitely a no-go. This one has much better material. It's a just a satin something or other. Um, the pearls are beautiful. Um, but the styling is wrong. It doesn't have a very wide skirt and the top is just not, it's not Victorian. It has the sleeveless thing there and it's a really high waist. So that one, even though the material's good, the style is wrong. Our next example is one where the style is great. It just has eh, material. But honestly, if somebody showed up in this one, you can tell it's actually, it's vintage. Um, and so if somebody showed up in this one, I don't think anybody would bat an eye. It's got great lace at the top. Um, it's got a nice v, a v at the waist. It does have a fairly flared skirt. It has a pretty long train, but that's pretty easy to bustle up or take off or whatever. Um, so you could put a little, under that to make it poof out 
This one is actually okay, even though it has the chiffon. Eh, um, it's a heavier weight chiffon. Um, and so, For those who don't know, what is chiffon? Chiffon is this net-like fabric. So that's chiffon, that is chiffon, that is chiffon. <laughs> Um, wedding dresses like chiffon. Um, even this is a type of chiffon. This one's really thick and like drapey, but you can see it's kind of see-through. So then here's one that is actually a lot better. So it has um, these chiffon sleeves and again, I, of course I just said no chiffon, but the fact that it's just the sleeves um, makes it a little bit easier. This would also be very easy to uh, alter to where you actually take the sleeves off and put on a lace collar, but then you'd lose all that pretty beading, and that is very pretty beading. So, you know, it's meh. It's not exact on the sleeves and the arms, but it's still beautiful. Um, it has a very nice waist, a very Victorian waist, and a nice wide hoop that you could, or a skirt that you could put a hoop around it. Obviously, it's white. You can dye wedding dresses, or you can choose accessories like flowers and stuff that are a different color to put on it to make it not just a white dress. So, um, this one also has a train. It's all bustled up here, so you'd have to deal with that. But that's kind of what to look for. Um, and then if, say you find a dress that has almost the perfect silhouette, except it's strapless, right? That's definitely not Victorian. Um, and so what you can do is you can put what's called a Bertha on it. And that's fabric or lace that goes around the shoulders. And it would, it would just kind of disguise the fact that it doesn't have sleeves because that Bertha would, um, would become the sleeves essentially. So now that we have our dress, how do we really complete the whole outfit? You know, make it just look mm, perfect, you know? Um, so those are the finishing touches. I would say the first kind of absolute thing that's going to make your outfit look put together and look Victorian is your hairdo. Um, Victorians always wore their hair up in some sort of um, updo. Now, it could be a low chignon bun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> chignon. 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 Um, bun, that's the low bun here. But they, they would do rolls in their hair. They would put their, their hair up in, um, in more swags. They loved making things droopy and swaggy. Um, and buns at the top or buns down here and the hair rolled and ringlets down and around, but it was always an updo. And then they would always have lots of flowers. Um, back then, a lot of times they were fresh flowers, but they also used silk flowers as well. Um, so decorating your hair, having an updo and decorating it is going to make your outfit automatically look more Victorian. Um, and then the second thing would be gloves. And... Um, the Victorians wore, um, they wore elbow length gloves. They wore wrist length gloves and of course everything in between. Um, I would say if you want to wear gloves, it's great. It kind of completes the look Wear whatever looks best with your outfit. A lot of, um, right now you can find those in the thrift stores that sell all the Halloween stuff. And then like spirit Halloween store, um, because we're filming this at the beginning of October. So those are all over the place. Um, I would say the only type of glove, obviously, um, you want like fancy, you know, feminine looking gloves. Um, but I would say like the, the elbow length lacy gloves are not Victorian. Um, but you know, if you showed up to a ball in that, nobody's going to complain. Um, but the, the wrist length lacy gloves are fairly Victorian. The elbow length ones, they, they just didn't do that. But it's totally up to you. If you really like the elbow length lacy ones, go for it. Um, jewelry, whatever you like and fits with your outfit. Um, the Victorians, some of them went very gaudy and wore tons of jewelry. And other people 
didn't, they wore very minimalistic jewelry, just like today. It's personal preference. Um, obviously, things that are made out of obvious plastic are not going to be very Victorian-esque, but, you know, whatever you like and goes well with your outfit. Make it pretty. Um, a fan, those foldable, you know, Victorian fans. Okay, you're not going to be carrying it around 100% of the time. You're not going to, it doesn't really complete the outfit, except when you've been dancing and you're hot. They're very necessary at that point. For those of you going to my birthday party, because I know there will be some of you, you will want to bring a fan. It is going to be warm. Warm. Yes. Her birthday is uh, in November, but when you've been dancing and you've got a lot of people indoors dancing, it gets hot and you'll want a fan. And everybody around you, as you fan yourself and fan them as well, will love you for your fan. Um, another small thing that is not necessary, but it's one of those things that just kind of, it, it's the little things, right? And that's your purse. What do you do? How do you carry anything that you might need to carry on you that evening to the ball? Well, the Victorian's purses were called reticules. And a reticule was basically a little, oftentimes gathered bag that some of them were very, very ornately decorated. But they're also just kind of more plain ones. But it's basically just a drawstring purse that's, you know... <laughs> that big ish that you can put your phone in and uh, chapstick and your per your um, your fan when you take off your gloves to eat you can put your your gloves in there you know just that type of thing um, so the reticule and it just a small a small drawstring purse that matches your outfit you know that's a reticule but it makes it more Victorian than having a purse um, or a huge bag tote bag whatever slung over your shoulder um, and then the last thing is our ball is going to be in November after all. What do you do? If you can find any kind of cape or shawl or anything like that to wear rather than a modern coat, it's just going to set off your outfit that much more um, and make it just seem more with the times. So you didn't actually mention shoes. Is this something that for to complete the outfit or something like that yeah in modern times and even back then they did often see shoes as a way to complete the outfit um just like nowadays the victorians loved their fancy shoes and they embellished them and they made them pretty because yes you did see ladies shoes and feet and ankles in the victorian time period um i know shocking right um but we're going to a ball we are modern day people wear what is comfortable because if your feet hurt and you don't want to dance that kind of defeats the purpose of going to a ball so uh, literally wear what's comfortable um if you want a period look then go for like simple flats or pumps um rather than chunky um shoes like a lot of modern day shoes are really chunky looking um but back then they wouldn't have had that. They would have had thin soles and um, a more, a smaller heel, you know, not like a big, a big heel um, like we have today. But um, most of the shoes that you can find today that truly look Victorian are not, would not be comfortable to dance in all evening. So really find something that works and wear it. Nobody's going to see your feet except when you're twirling around the dance floor. And then they're going to be looking at your beautiful outfit, not your feet. And some people, Sarah's one of them, actually wears shoes that are startlingly modern. Um, the last time we went to a ball, she literally wore her high top converse underneath her gown. Um, it's for the shock factor. Some people like to wear um, like pretty um, or fancy or funny socks um, for the same reason. So, you know, just wear whatever you want and it'll be fine. Is there anything else that we should think about when planning our outfit? Yes. Uh, speaking of socks, <laughs> underclothes, you're wearing a hoop skirt. 
you're twirling around a dance floor. You'd want something under there. Um, whether it be drawers or biker shorts or um, leggings, whatever, you want something that if your skirt flips up, you're covered. Um, tights, uh, I would say if you're going to wear tights, wear like biker shorts as well because um, tights are usually pretty sheer and don't cover a whole lot. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to wear underclothing underneath your skirt that just imagine your skirt flying up because when you're getting twirled around the dance floor, that's a distinct possibility. So wear something that is going to be, um, you know, keep private things private. Nobody wants to see that. Do we have any final thoughts? Um, you know, in the end, doesn't matter what you wear. If your outfit is not particularly Victorian, if it's the wrong time period, if it's not put together as well as other people's, the point is that you're dressing up and having fun. And even if you choose, you know what, this whole Victorian thing is too much, just give us your best, a, a fancy dress and go in there and have fun. That's really the main thing about it is dress up and have some fun. So we did this entire video so far all about women's Victorian ball outfits. But what about the guys? <laughs> the guys have it so easy in comparison. Literally, black pants, white shirt, you will blend in. Boom. Done. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. The video's over. <laughs> okay. But what if the gents want to look more Victorian than more modern, like you just said? All right. So if you want to look more Victorian, um, then basically there's two things you can to do to look Victorian at a Victorian ball. Um, in addition to your black pants and white shirt, and it does obviously need to be a long sleeve, um, full button shirt. Um, we're not talking about a polo shirt here, you know, short sleeve polo. Um, so a dress shirt, right? A long sleeve white dress shirt. Um, so the other two things you can do to really amp it up and make it look Victorian is to wear a vest. And most men's uh, vests had lapels on them. So that's where, you know, the edge of the, the fabric actually folds over. Um, and then um, it has the full back their full vest, not like the, the tuxedo ones that just have the, the, yeah, no back. <laughs> They're just like a belt around the bottom. Um, kind of weird. So full back vest, usually have the lapels, whatever color you want. Um, obviously we kind of, uh, most people know what seems old fashioned as far as like fabric and patterns. Um, so something a little bit in the more muted colors and, um, and like, what's the word like, uh, fabric choices, um, uh, patterns. There you go. Um, and then the other thing would be a cravat or an ascot. Um, and these are things that modern day cravats, um, are usually there. It's basically a strip of fabric, but if you look up a cravat, it's usually like folded and stitched in a certain manner. And then you tie it in a certain manner. Victorians, literally just had, it was almost like a scarf. It was like three feet long, um, just a strip of fabric about that wide. And the gentleman would have a stand up collar and would wrap it around and just tie it in this big floofy knot that just kind of sticks out right here underneath their chin. And, um, those two things are really going to take your outfit from, uh, yeah, I'm here. I dressed up to, Hey, look, I'm making an attempt to be a Victorian. Um, if you want to take it a step further, having a suit coat, um, is uh, a good thing. You're looking for as fancy as you can find or afford or borrow. Um, uh, tails are awesome. A tuck suit is awesome. Obviously not everybody can find those. Not everybody has those. Um, you don't want a modern day sport coat that just, it does not look Victorian. Um, and it would need to be black to match or gray. Victorian men wore a lot of gray, um, suits, so you can get by with gray as well. 
Um, but you know, as fancy of a suit coat as you can find and use, honestly, you're probably going to take it off halfway through the night anyways, cause you're going to get hot. Um, so, and then finishing touches would be the gloves. And again, you can find those at any, um, Halloween store right now or thrift stores. Um, even when it's not Halloween season, um, you can usually find gloves at thrift stores. Um, I've even seen men use like literally the white knit gloves that you can get to keep your hands warm. I've seen them use those. Um, but just, yeah. And usually white, um, except for the ladies who matched their gloves to their outfits. Sometimes men's gloves are always white. So, um, and then a top hat if you want, but again, you're not going to be top, um, dancing in it. You'll take your top hat off to dance, but Hey, for those pictures, mwah, looks awesome. And again, you can find those at the Halloween stores right now for like 12 bucks. Um, and some of them are actually pretty decent, uh, quality. I was actually surprised the last time, um, I saw one, I think it was at a savers, um, 12 bucks and it was actually a decent hat. Um, again, what about shoes? Same thing, man. Just be comfortable. I mean, if you have black ones that are comfortable that match your outfit, great. Um, if not, do the best you can. But honestly, we would rather you up there dancing in tennis shoes than not dancing because your feet hurt because you're in dress shoes that you wear every five years. Um, so yeah, comfort. Try to make a match if you can, whatever. Yeah. And where can people find these things where they don't like, and how much about do they cost? Um, so for the men, obviously, if you don't own a suit or a white shirt and black pants, um, you're going to have to buy them or, or I almost said steal them. No, don't steal them unless it's, you know, from your dad or something like that. Um, but, uh, borrow them, you know, um, Thrift stores are a great place to start. I mean, honestly, a white shirt and black pants can probably be gotten at Walmart for fairly cheap. Um, vests. Uh, Amazon has some decent ones from everything from like 20 bucks up to like 60 bucks um, for good uh, vests. And again, we'll put some links in the description. Um, an ascot. Uh, or a cravat. Um, again, Amazon. I found some on Amazon. Um, but really, honestly, it's a strip of fabric, um, like kind of like silky, silky fabric. Um, and, uh, I talked about the hats and the gloves and, and all of that. And those are really easy to find right now, this time of year in the fall, because Halloween stores, if it's not Halloween, you might look out at a normal thrift store, um, and those types of things, if you're looking for, at, for things at thrift stores is you might have to try for months just going in and, and looking before you actually find the right thing. But yeah, thrift stores right now, it's easy to find this type of stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much for all of your wonderful knowledge. And I hope everyone here really enjoyed and learned some stuff and can actually like dress up now. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you be... so much for watching. Absolutely. We'll look forward to seeing you. Bye.